Hi everyone, it's me, Austin John Plays of the YouTube channel Austin John Plays, and today I'm going to be going over how you can get all of the hybrid flowers in Animal Crossing New Horizon for Nintendo Switch. The reason I'm making this video is because there is a lot of inaccurate information going around the internet right now on how to get all of the hybrid flowers in the game. These are all of the hybrid flowers in the game. Some of these are very easy, some of these are not very easy at all. Six purple flowers, four black flowers, four blue flowers, five pink flowers, one green flower, and six orange flowers. Between the actual different species of flowers, this is everything in the game. Roses are the most complicated, we're gonna come to that at the end. Now the reason I'm making this video is because there's a lot of charts that circled around on Reddit as soon as this game came out that were uh, not fully accurate because the genetics of flowers in this game are actually significantly more complicated than you would think. And any flowers that you find on your island, they don't have promised genes. This actually goes to dominant and recessive genes, and the only way to get absolute perfect one-to-one -one replication of everything I'm going to be talking about is to use seed of the flowers. And by seeds, I mean you go to Nook's Cranny and you can buy your seeds from Timmy and Tommy over there. First of all, really big shout out going to the people who data mined for this information, Ader and Pela, and then Peach and Keat put this beautiful visual together, and I'm going to be going over this with you now. First of all, wind flowers. Everything that you see the seed icon next to, like the red, orange, and white, those are going to be specifically from the seeds. Now the very simple ones to do are red and orange will always get you pink, white and white give you a 25% chance at blue, and then you see that gold star next to the blue? You need to use that blue next to a seed red in order to get what's called a hybrid red, because it's a red flower, but it has that gold star. At the same time, a yellow background pink from a regular pink and a blue gives you a chance at a purple. I know the yellow background on the pink can be a little mm, subtle. So generally, what you wanna do for this is you get your hybrids and then you put your hybrids together in a breeding batch. I'm not gonna go over all these very, very specifically. I am going to link this down below. However, there's a lot more points that we have to talk about before you just click that link and you're done. So don't click away yet. First of all, let's talk about rare island flowers. There are a few different islands that you're going to encounter in the game based on the different times of year that have different flowers there. There is a large fish island that only spawns size four fish and larger. That's fairly rare at I believe 3%. Peacock butterfly island that is just a big circle of rare flowers. That's about two or 3%. You're going to have one main flower on your island and one sister flower on your island. When you go to these rare islands, you're going to have a chance at encountering these rare colors. So for example, for hyacinths, your rare island flowers are going to include orange and blue. As you can see here, next to the blue icon, you have this little palm tree here. This means that this is from a rare flower island, and it gives you a 25% chance at a purple. Meanwhile, in order to get a purple without that being your native flower and getting these rare island flowers, you have to breed a red for a yellow at a 50% chance for an orange. That's a hybrid orange. Those two oranges breed together for a 6% chance at purples. However, Roses are the most complex flower in the entire game, and the rarest color of all is the blue rose. The blue rose, if it's your native flower and you have rare island oranges, then perfect, because those can just make you a blue, or they make you special hybrid reds, and special hybrid reds get you blues, then you're off the hook. But if it's not your native flower and you only have seeds, then you actually have a lot of steps that are required for you to get yourself a blue. You have to breed two whites for a purple, that's a special purple, then breed that with a yellow for a special white, then breed that with your original special purple, for a specialer purple and only some of the specialer purples give you a chance at getting yellow flowers and you have to test that over and over. You have to get two of those, breathe that with itself and then get a white and then breathe that with the special orange that you do this method. Then you get hybrid reds that give you a chance at blues. Very complicated. Again, it's going to be in the description down below. Now I don't time travel in this game at all and I don't care how much I like you. I'm not going to time travel for you. I want to go over some basic principles when it comes to 
breeding flowers. First of all, 5x5 five five grids are garbage. Get rid of all 5x5 five five grids that you think are good because they are not good 100%. 5x5 five five grids get you a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need. Instead, use this chart and just accurately figure out what you need. So now, I want to do a quick demonstration in a scenario that, you know, you have some pansies, they are not your native flower, and you just kind of have what you have. Wisp, get out of here. You're not part of this demonstration. So say, for example, you got yourself on five red pansy seeds. You have one white pansy and one yellow pansy. This is a situation you very well could be in. I'm not going to go over a demonstration if you have unlimited access. Instead, we're going to be super stripped back here. Referencing this chart at the very top, we have red and yellow seeded make an orange seed, which is very, very, very simple. All you need to do is make sure that you have a red next to an orange. And if that's all you're going for, then heck, by all means, just put your yellow right in the middle of all of your reds. If all I'm going for is an orange, then perfect. I have these five reds down here and this one yellow. I water them. Tomorrow I have a chance at an orange. If not, I water them again. I have a chance at orange and we take it from there. At that point, I'm then done with my yellow because I have my yellow. I'm just going to move it away and I have my orange, and that's just chilling up here. Once you have that hybrid and it's not used for any more hybrid breeding, get it out of there. It, it's not gonna be used. I don't need the yellow, I don't need the orange. Instead, I'm just back down to my five seed reds, right? Now, in order for me to get a blue, I have to have two whites, but I only have one white seed. That's fine. If we leave it alone and it's not next to any other flower, then it's going to clone. And cloning happens in one of two scenarios. One, if there's nothing else around it that's a pansy, and then it's going to clone itself and it's going to be the exact same flower. Beautiful. The other scenario is these two reds can crossbreed and make some muted red that I don't want, and this same flower on the same day, it can't breed with this partner or this partner. They're considered invalid, so this has a chance of and making a perfect identical red unlike the monstrosity that would pop up from these two. So all you wanna do is take this one pansy, leave it alone, water it every day, and then it can duplicate itself and be the exact same white pansy, which is perfect. Now it's your option. If you wanna move this pansy away to right here and let these clone the same way that the single one did, fantastic. Then you would be up to you know, three or four white seeds, which is perfect. Which is not the same thing that if a white was next to a white, what they produce will not be the same exact white. Again, the chart displayed goes off of the exact statistics of using only seeds, not, you know, the, the breed jacks, as they're called in Pokemon. But anyways, I want to get myself that blue. If I keep these two white ones here, then I have a 25% chance that it's going to make me a blue. Any other white ones that it produces may not be what I want, so I probably would just get rid of them if I were you. But fantastic, now I have this blue. This is a hybrid blue. It's the blue with the little star, which is perfect. So now we're gonna take it away because we don't want that blue to breed with the white. Now again, what are these every day? 25% chance of blue. We take our blue down here, and we take one of our seed reds, and we put them next to each other. That's it. If I were to put another red, like in this position where I'm standing, then there's a chance that this red can breed with this red and give me some monstrosity. Or at the same time, this blue can breed with this red, and I need a hybrid red from this. Meanwhile, on the same day, this red that I put here, that I'm not actually putting here, can make me a cloned red, and I won't know which is which, and I have to throw them both out. So, you should just keep one blue and one red next to each other, water them every day, and there's a 100% chance that you're going to get a hybrid red. Now, spoilers, hybrid reds look exactly the same as regular reds. You will have no way to tell the difference between this seed red and this hybrid red. So you need to be diligent. Or if you have terraforming unlocked, you know, you could put brown dirt underneath these and then you just move this one away. So here's my one hybrid red. I still have my seed reds up here. I'm still ignoring them and whatever children they make, we're getting rid of. Heck, we could even separate them by one and just clone them. These guys can still produce me hybrid reds, which is fantastic. And this boy over here can clone 
to make another hybrid red, which is what we want. We actually need two hybrid reds in order to get ourselves a purple. Either this is gonna make ourselves a hybrid red or this will clone for a hybrid red. Fantastic. Now we have two hybrid reds. And again, we're faced with the point of we can either clone these or we can hope for the 6% chance of getting a purple. Now this is sort of a sort of a difficult decision for you because if you have two here, then you have a 6% chance. But if you have two here and then two here, you have in theory a 12% chance. And then if you have eight, you have a 24% chance, so on and so forth. So I wouldn't tear this down or even this because this can still make more blues. And then you could have another blue and another red hoping for more hybrid reds. And then it's all about getting this super rare chance of these hybrid reds making that 6%. But when that fateful day happens that these hybrid reds give you a 6% chance at a purple, fantastic. Guess what it's going to be time for? It's going to be time to clean up. You have your seeds, which are your yellow, your red, and your white. This one has three hybrids being the orange, the blue, and the purple. Just like we did with the yellow and the orange, we don't need them anymore. We don't need any of these anymore. So you take your purple, take it away, you grab your blue, you grab your whites, and then you just separate them and you clone them. Because if they're cloned, they're gonna be exact copies. And honestly, it doesn't even matter about the genetics anymore. You have the colors you want. And this white will always make whites, this purple always makes purples, this blue always makes blues, so on and so forth from there. And that's the reason that cloning is significantly better than breeding. Because again, these two hybrid reds have a 6% chance of giving us a purple. And this purple has a 100% chance of giving us a purple. So yeah, 100 is better than 6. What I personally recommend is coming up with a way to catalog them. Again, up here I just decided to put two of every flower. If they happen to breed, fine, whatever. I honestly don't need them. But if you wanna set up something really nice for where your rare flowers are gonna breed, you can do that. You can organize them by color, like here's all my blues, and guess what? The blues are not touching any other of their same species. This hyacinth is far from hyacinths. This rose, not near roses. Same thing goes for all of these flowers. I happen to put the green mum here because there were only seven pinks, but I made sure that the green mum was not next to the pink mum. Also right here, these oranges, these are rare flower oranges. I've been playing this game every day. Uh, they've never given me a blue. They've given me hybrid reds, but those hybrid reds haven't gotten me anything. Once you're done with these seeds, move on to another one. Or you know what, your island's big. Do the same thing over here with a different type of flower. Once you're done breeding, just dig them up, clone them. Get them out of there. Now, the genetics in this game are can actually be extremely complicated. And because of that, I've actually seen, oh, look, I got I got Wisp on my island tonight. I've actually seen botanists who have gone to college make diagrams trying to explain how the flowers breed. And you know what? You don't need to be a botanist. You don't need to go to school or college or secondary school in order to figure out what's going on here. Instead, just follow the chart that's linked down below and you're gonna be able to get every flower in the game. Simple as that. Next, it's very important that we talk about hydration, watering your plants, and the bonus that comes from watering your plants. Now, every day, you can water your plants, and I do recommend to. However, it can also rain on your island, and villagers can water your plants. And by plants, I mean flowers. If it rains on your island, then every flower is considered watered, and you do not have to water it. And if a villager decides to water one of your flowers, it's considered watered and you do not have to water it. So if it rains on your island, boom, you don't have to water anything for the entire day. Done. Actually, because of that, that's the reason I like to water my flowers very late at night. Really? Both of you are just going to hang out here? Yes, I'm ignoring you right now. Having friends over your island and having them water your flowers is going to increase the chance of them reproducing. Two. 5.61 times more likely to either clone or breed on that day. Uh, hopefully I have a clip of, of what the gold shimmies look like going on. Once they're watered by five other people from other Nintendo Switches, by the way, you cannot use other profiles. Cannot do it, it has to be people visiting your island online or locally. 
Once they water, you're gonna have gold sparkles flying around and your reproduction rate is gonna be insane. Between all these hybrids, which is honestly not a lot of flowers, out of these 28 flowers, I'll usually get between 20 to 24 flowers every single day if I have five friends come over and water. Simple as that. Plus, whenever friends come over, make sure you check for a DIY. Another important thing to note regarding gold roses. See these beautiful boys right here? A gold watering can, which mine literally just broke, so just pretend I have a gold watering can, is very unique. It waters nine flowers. The spot that you're standing on, the one in front of you, the one to your left, right, and then far as well. It's a total of nine spaces. However, only the flower directly in front of you gets what's called the flag to produce a gold rose. Meaning like if this was a gold watering can and I did this and it watered all six of these black roses that just got watered and the two gold ones across from me, only this one black rose right here would then be able to produce a gold rose. It also has a 50% chance of producing a black rose. So you need to water every single black rose individually. You have to go up and down your row like this for all of your black roses to be able to produce a gold rose. With that being said, a black rose does not need to be next to another black rose to get you a gold rose. You can see how these were spaced out right here. I watered all these and this one, or this one, I don't know which one, produced me this gold rose. If you want to keep them close together because of space constrictions, go for it. But you could have them completely spread out like this and you're fine. Something also important to note is that when a flower gets what's called the gold flag and is able to produce a gold rose, you do not have to water it with a gold can until it produces a gold rose. Meaning that if I watered all four of these flowers with a gold watering can, one of these two produced it, I don't know which one. So I would go ahead and I would water this one and I would water this one. And again, by water, I mean stand directly in front of it and make sure it's the one directly in front of you. It needs your love. These two, however, uh, they gave me a black one, so I don't need to water them with a gold can. Instead, I will water them with a regular can, or if it rains, or a villager, or a friend, doesn't matter, and now they have a chance to reproduce. And if they reproduce to a gold rose, then fantastic, I then water it with a gold can. Some other important notes here. I'm sorry, there's a lot of complicated stuff when it comes to flowers in this game. Gold roses cannot clone, period. You have a gold rose, you water it every day, you're not gonna get a gold rose from it, period. End of story. Also, let's talk about rain and durability of cans. When it rains on your island, every single space is going to be considered hydrated. And when a space is hydrated, you can water it with your can and it will not take durability from your can. So essentially, you're getting free watering. If you combine that with the last concept that I just spoke about, anytime that it's raining, while it's raining, water every single black flower directly in front of it. Water it, water it, water it, water it, so on and so forth. It should be noted that after you water flowers, if you were to dig this rose up and move it to right here for whatever reason, then the flower is still considered watered. However, the ground underneath it is no longer considered hydrated. And because of that, if you were to water that with a watering can, it would use durability. Simple as that. Also, the durability for your can only goes for you. It does not go for guest villagers. So anyone coming over to water, if they water your flowers and it rained that day and you already watered them and everything is considered hydrated, their cans can still break. Pro tip, when people come over to help water, no matter what, have extra cans ready. If no one has a can, just give them a can. They're doing you a favor and they're saving you a lot of time, quite frankly. The imager link that I linked down below to the guide that also has some layout patterns, which layout patterns are completely optional. If you want to lay them out like that, go for it. But everything that I just told you in this video is 100% accurate as of version 1.2. It's found via data mining. It is, it cannot be wrong. If you've tried to do all the stuff <laughs> that even I did, you know, a month ago with the cool 5x5 five five grids. 5x5 five five grids, again, are garbage. Don't do those. And again, once you get the hybrid roses that you want, and once you get the rare roses that you want, put them to the side and clone them. 
you're much better off cloning them than you are at breeding again, also with the chance that breeding them doesn't get you what you want. Once you have a surplus of hybrid flowers, you can decorate your area, you can get rid of all of your common flowers, ignore that one red rose right there while I'm talking about it, and you can just have hybrid flowers everywhere. And let me tell you, there's nothing more magical than walking through your entire island and all there is is hybrid flowers. This beautiful space right here, all hybrid flowers all on the outside. None of them are the same type next to each other. So when it rains, they're gonna have a chance to clone and I'm gonna have even more of them and they're gonna be beautiful. All right, well guys, my name is Austin John. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you know someone who's breeding flowers and they haven't been able to get the right ones, share this video with them. It has a whole bunch of tips and tricks that you just learned that your friends should know too. If you enjoyed my video, I have a Let's Play series here where I give you little tips and tricks like this while I design in my opinion really beautiful areas like this memory garden mixed with a whole bunch of nova stars and celestial stuff all right well if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe turn on notifications be sure to like the video until next time austin john out